Well, uh, hi there. Um, we are doing our thought for the day, uh, pretty much most days in the week when I can do that. And we are started yesterday looking at uh, Mark's Gospel. Uh, I thought we kind of work, have a journey through Mark's Gospel over the coming days. And um, I want to carry on where I left off yesterday, uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse 14. If you want to follow along and have the Bible open with you, I'm going to take a little section at a time, a few verses, a few lines at a time. Uh, so it's good to have it open in front of you. So uh, when you, if you want to pause, go and get your Bible, that's fine. Uh, if each day when you come to this video, you want to have the Bible ready with you in Mark's Gospel, that would be good as well. Um, and so we carry on today um, looking at this Mark chapter 1 and starting at verse 14. And it starts there. Remember yesterday we were looking at um, John the Baptist baptizing people, Jesus coming to him, being baptized, uh, and then Jesus being driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. And, and then Mark says, after John was put in prison. Now he doesn't elaborate on that. He just makes a line. Uh, you know, Mark is very abrupt, very quick to put things down. It's the words of Peter. And all we're told is, after John was put in prison. Um, we do know that John was put in prison by King Herod after his wife Herodias kind of pushed him into it. And uh, so then it says, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of good uh, of God. And uh, Jesus starts in the Galilee area. I put up a map. It's not a very big map. Um, perhaps I'll try and make a bigger one at some point. But just to kind of uh, tell you, we have, remember the River Jordan I was talking about yesterday. The River Jordan runs down the edge of Israel. And um, up the top we have the Sea of Galilee or Lake Galilee. Uh, down the bottom we have the Dead Sea. And Jesus is up here. Uh, here is Nazareth where he, um, his family were, that's his family home. And uh, it's a little way away from the Sea of Galilee, but not very far. So um, we're told that Jesus started in the Galilee area, in other words, around that Lake Galilee, not very far from his hometown. And it says, Jesus went into Galilee, this is verse 14, uh, proclaiming the good news of God, the good news. Um, we all need good news and the people at that time needed good news as well and um, it really was time for good news for those people uh, what is it and it says the time has come he said the kingdom of God has come near that's verse 15 um, what is this good news that God's kingdom God's kingdom is now near where God is ruling where God is king then that is his kingdom. And Jesus is saying, God's kingdom is now come near. He's right close. And because King Jesus, God's son, is there right amongst them. So the kingdom is right there now, right with them. And uh, Jesus then carries on from really what John the Baptist was saying. Because it says there, uh, after this, God's kingdom has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus is carrying on from what John said. Repent, turn around. Um, the king, the kingdom is here and everything is changing and you need to turn from the wrong path that you're on and go on the, the right path, the, the path heading towards God. And uh, there had been godly kings in the past, in the Old Testament. There had been prophets in the past, in the Old Testament. And then some of you will know that with all the activity going on from the Old Testament, there was, on all the prophets were giving God's word and talking about the Messiah coming and all those things. And then suddenly, there is a silence. There's no prophet speaking God's word. Uh, and that goes on for 400 years. And there is nothing. There's all this activity from God's spokespeople uh, in the past about God and about the kingdom coming and about the Messiah coming and then it's quiet 400 years imagine that nothing being spoken from God and uh, now Jesus is saying this is it it's come here we are the Messiah is here it's Jesus and uh, 
he comes kind of in the form of a, of a rabbi. And a, and a rabbi has disciples to learn from him. And a rabbi is one who gathers around a group of guys and they walk together, they learn together, they eat, breathe, sleep in the same place together. And he is the teacher of his group of students, so to speak. Um, and so you kind of think, OK, here is King Jesus. Here is the Messiah. He's finally come. Who would he choose to be his group of students? I mean, you know, Jesus had, you know, the creme de la creme to choose from, if you like. He could have chosen anybody. Here is God's son. And, and the whole idea of having these, these students, these 12 men around him, would be that they would then learn from him and they would understand him and that they would be able to then take out the message, take out the teaching to other people. So who would he choose? You know, learned people, uh, what, you know, who would he choose? Um, and he chooses, well, he starts by choosing fishermen. So let's read um, verse 16. Uh, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw fishermen. Now, up in the Galilee area, it's a fishing area. It still is a fishing area. There's loads of fishing boats. There's lots of fish there. If you go around the side of the Sea of Galilee, there's, there's fish shops. There's restaurants where you can have fish and so on. Uh, it's still going on 2,000 years later. And so Jesus is walking down the, the, the shore of sea, Gal the sea of Galilee, it says, and he walked by and he saw Simon. And his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. There's nothing unusual about that. The whole shore area along there are all full of fishermen. Um, but you kind of think Jesus goes along and he sees these fishermen, and um, that's not normal students for a teacher. That's not normal students for a rabbi, uh, and definitely not when you think about God's son coming and preparing uh, a group of people to carry out the good news to people and bring God's kingdom. Uh, that's not who you would think he would choose, but he goes to Simon and Andrew, and they're in this family fishing business. And uh, he says to them, verse 17, come follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. Um, so there they are along the shore of the Galilee uh, and all the fishermen were there with their boats and their nets and there is this family business going on. I mean, that again is not unusual. All the families were in the fishing business around there and they've been doing it for years and years and years. Um, and this was all they knew. This was the, their livelihood. And it was brothers and the father and they were in the fishing business. They would go out and do the fishing together and so on. And here is Jesus coming along and he meets uh, with these two brothers and he says come along come follow me I will send you out uh, to fish for people and we're told in uh, verse 18 at once again in Mark's gospel there's lots of at once's this whole sense of 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 Mark writing down the words of Peter and, and it's kind of everything was action-packed at once immediately straight away um, and we're told here that at once they left their nets and followed him. How amazing is that? Um, and then again with these two guys, then they walk along the shore a little bit further. And I suppose they walked very far, but they walked along a little bit further. And you're going to, you think Jesus would go and, and go into Jerusalem and go all around the place and pick some people. But no, all he did was just walk along the shore a little bit further. <coughs> Excuse me. And just a few more steps. And it says, when he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, in a boat preparing their nets. They were getting ready to go uh, fishing. And, uh, you know, James and John, again, are in the family fishing business. And um, without delay, it says in verse 20, he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. And there's Jesus. I mean, they're, they're getting ready to go out fishing. They've got the, the stuff in the boat and so on. They're getting ready to go out. And Jesus comes along and just says, hey, come and follow me. And they just get out their boat. They leave their father. They leave the fishing business. And they just go, yeah, OK, then. Um, and, and you kind of think, what is Jesus doing? 
Right at the beginning of his ministry, he can choose anyone he wants to be his disciples, to be his learners, to be the ones that carry on his message and so on and bring God's kingdom into this world. And and yet four out of the 12 disciples that he chooses uh, are almost unimportant people. Um, they're, they're not learned people. They are sons of fishermen. Hmm. But. Uh, I will turn you, he says, into men who will fish for people. They kind of understood the whole idea of preparing and setting the nets up and going out at the right time and just gathering in the fish. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to I'm going to equip you. I'm going to get you into going out and fishing for people, gathering them in. Again, these are not normal students for a rabbi. Fishing for people. This is this is not what rabbis normally talk about. Going out and fishing for people, and they're talking about the law and the right things and the wrong things and all of that. Uh, so these four uh, young guys left their family business to follow uh, Jesus. Um, you know what I'm going to ask you now, don't you? At the end of this little thought for today. Um, Jesus didn't call anyone, if you like, special uh, in, in human eyes. But he called human, normal people to put things down in order to take up the ministry of fishing for people. That's what they did. They put down their normal things and they picked up, uh, they went with Jesus to take up a ministry of fishing for people. And, you know, so many times I hear people kind of go, what can I do? I'm only a, and we can't say I am only a. Jesus chose four of his disciples and they were, if you like, only fishermen. Um, Jesus used uneducated fishermen. They only knew how to fish and yet he called them. And, and so don't let the Lord hear you say, oh, I'm too old. I'm too shy. I'm too busy. Jesus says to you, come follow me and I can turn you into someone who can bring people into the kingdom of God. Isn't that amazing? God says to us, you and me, uh, come and follow me and I will turn you into someone who will be able to catch people for my kingdom. What is your answer? What is your answer to that? We're going to pray now and I'm going to help you to think about that answer. And I want you to think about this answer today. Uh, perhaps spend some time in prayer after this is finished and kind of say, Lord, what is it you want me to do? What is it you really are calling me to do? And I want to say yes to it. I want to say yes to it. So let's pray now. Uh, Lord, yes, is the answer. The very fact I'm calling you Lord means that you are in charge. You are the one that I must say yes to because you are Lord. And so I pray, Lord, that you will use me. Let me learn from you that you will use me to introduce others to you. I am willing today to do that. Amen. I hope you are willing to do that. I hope you will know God working through your life by his spirit to equip you and to enable you to say, yes, Lord. I mean, we can't say no, Lord, because if he's Lord, you don't say no to him. So when he says to you, I want you to do this task, I want you to do this ministry, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, what character you are, I want you to do this. We need to say, yes, Lord. I hope you do. We'll see you again tomorrow or soon as we continue through Mark's Gospel. Have a great day.